Welcome to one of Europe's grandest cities. Do you know how Budapest got its name? The city as it exists now is pretty young as cities go. It's a sprightly 146 years old. Before that, there were three towns here. Buda, Obuda, and Pest, which were unified in 1873. Today, although unified in name, the city is divided into two halves by the Danube River. The western side of the Danube is known as Buda, quiet and residential, where you'll find historic sites like Buda Castle and Fisherman's Bastion. The eastern side is known as Pest. It's lively and modern, the hub of Budapest's economy and culture, home to the Hungarian parliament, some of Budapest's most famous thermal baths, ruined bars, and everything in between. I'm here to explore where the boundaries truly lie in this beautiful city. Budapest is unified in name, but divided in nature. The East, the West, the Buddha, the Pest, two distinct identities on opposite banks of the Danube. A wood crossing the river really make the city feel so different. And which side of the river would get me under the skin of the real, authentic Budapest? We explore the hills of Buda and the streets of Pest. We meet local people, visit amazing places, try Hungarian food and a bit of Hungarian alcohol. We sample the weird and wonderful nightlife. We soak ourselves in the city and get to the heart of Budapest. I came here expecting to find a city divided, but what I found was so much greater and so much grander than just two parts of a whole. Our journey begins at Heathrow Airport, and after dropping the car with a handy meet and greet service, it was into a lounge for a light lunch before boarding. With unlimited food and free Wi-Fi, I definitely recommend a lounge before a flight. You can book yours with the Holiday Extras app. Soon enough, we were on the plane, and after a two and a half hour flight, we touched down in Budapest. To get into town from the airport, I'd advise pre-booking an airport transfer with Holiday Extras door-to-door -door service really is the most hassle-free option. So after a good night's sleep, we were ready to start exploring the city. Our first stop, the Hills of Buddha, which meant crossing the River Danube. Seicini Chain Bridge is to Budapest what Tower Bridge is to London, or Brooklyn Bridge is to New York. It's still a major crossing for the city, but it's also an iconic public landmark and a popular item on the tourist checklist. Designed by Englishman William Tierney Clark, it opened in 1849 and was the first permanent bridge across the Danube in all of Hungary. In World War II it was destroyed by retreating German forces during the Siege of Budapest, and only the towers remained. However, it was rebuilt and opened again in 1949, exactly 100 years after its inauguration. If you're walking across the bridge from the Pest side towards Buda, like us, you'll arrive at the base of the Budavari Shiklo Funicular Railway Line, which takes tourists up the hill to Buda Castle. You can purchase tickets at the station, but be warned, in peak summer season, the queue can stretch back quite a way, and there's no shade to speak of, so don't forget your sunscreen. Cable cars depart every 10 minutes and take just a few minutes to reach the top. So, we've just taken the funicular up from the Seicini chain bridge up to the castle, which is great because it's boiling hot and it means that we didn't have to walk it, but we also get to enjoy the view from up here as well. And what an incredible view it is. From this height, the walls of the castle grounds treat you to a spectacular look back across the eastern side of the city. It's a fact that's not lost on Budapest's tourist population. Every vantage point was packed with people hunting for the perfect photo of the city skyline. Don't worry though, with a little patience, there's plenty of opportunity to get yourself a great photo too. From up at the heights of Buddha Castle looking back over the Danube, you can really appreciate the difference between the two sides of the city. Pest is every part of the modern European capital. Dense, busy, lively, but Buddha feels much calmer, easygoing, and significantly less modernized. Like so much of Budapest, the castle grounds are a beautiful mix of medieval, baroque, and neoclassical design, 
and I'd recommend anyone visiting to explore fully before moving on. So we're just moving on from Buddha Castle, which is beautiful. You could spend the entire day here. Unfortunately, we don't have time for that because we're just about to move on to Fisherman's Bastion. But we're going to grab some lunch and uh, yeah, enjoy the architecture. Fisherman's Bastion is one of the finest examples of the grandeur that Budapest does so well. Built around the Roman Catholic Matthias Church, the Bastion is a neo-Gothic terrace that gives you more great views back across the river. And it's only oh, five, ten minutes walk away from Buddha Castle, so you can do them both in the same day. So why the Fisherman's Bastion? Well, it looks directly over an area called Vizivaros, or Watertown. In medieval times, this was where the city's fishermen lived. And then, when the bastion was complete, it was placed under the protection of the fishermen's guild. The bastion was built with views in mind, and it never actually got used as a defensive structure. It might look hundreds of years old, but it was only completed in 1902. The viewpoints here give you more great vistas across the Danube to Pest, just like at the castle. But from Fisherman's Bastion, you have a much clearer view of the beautiful, gigantic Hungarian Parliament building. You're going to get the best views from on top of the wall, but bear in mind that there's going to be a small charge at the turnstile on the way up there. The Bastion's seven towers each represent one of the Magyar tribes that settled the area that would go on to become the country of Hungary in 895 AD. The Grand Statue is of one of Hungary's most important historical figures. St. Stephen, the last Grand Prince of the Hungarians, and the first King of Hungary. So we've had a lovely time here at Fisherman's Bastion, and now we're going to round off a lovely evening, day one, by heading to the Parliament Building. And the way we're going to get there is by catching a bus back into town. So before we do that, here's a couple of tips on the public transport in Budapest. Public transport in Budapest is handled by the bus, tram and metro. Which one to use depends on your journey, and in all honesty, we found it best to just use Google Maps to pick the best route. In general, the tram was good for short hops across town, whereas the metro and bus were quicker for longer journeys. The same tickets work across all three of the bus, metro and tram, and you can pick them up from vending machines at any metro station. My recommendation is to pick up a cost-effective book of 10 singles at the start of your time in Budapest and then use them as you need them. Make sure you validate your ticket before taking any form of public transport in Budapest, as if you get caught with an unvalidated ticket then you will be fined. Tickets are validated using machines on board buses and trams and at the entrance to metro stations. Remember, each ticket is valid for a single one-way journey only. If you transfer, you'll need to validate a new ticket. And while we're talking about buying tickets, a word on money in Budapest. Although it's part of the EU, Hungary doesn't use the Euro. The currency here is the Hungarian forint, and prices are generally much lower than they are in London. For example, a pint of local beer will cost you around £1.30. Most places accept card, but it's always good to have a bit of cash too. To get your travel money, head over to the Holiday Extras website or check out the app. Our journey from Fisherman's Bastion didn't take long. When we arrived at the Hungarian Parliament building, I was in awe. It was one thing to see this fantastic building as part of the cityscape from the other side of the river, but getting up close was an entirely different experience. This is the largest building in Hungary and the tallest in Budapest. It's said that the sheer surface area and endless, intricate, detailed handiwork means that the building is under constant renovation to sustain its beauty. It was inaugurated on the 1000th anniversary of the country in 1896, but tragically, Imre Steindl, the architect, went blind before the building was finished in 1904 and never saw it completed. Basking in the scale and detail of the building was breathtaking. And the cherry on the cake? The weather was so hot when we visited, the water was being misted up from the ground to help visitors cool down. Just what I needed after a long day's exploring. So, it's the end of day one. The weather's been lovely, the time has flown by, and 
Budapest is already blowing me away. It's been amazing. But now we're going to head back, have some dinner, maybe a beer, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. So, having explored Buda and seen some of the city's most breathtaking architecture, I was ready to dig deeper into the modern day character of the city. Coming up in day two, I take a dip in the Seicini public baths and experience Budapest's vibrant nightlife. But before all that, we'd arranged to meet Nora from BudapestFoodTours.com to explore some of Hungary's most iconic dishes and the best places in Budapest to find them. Now, we'd hate to spoil the tour by showing you everything, but Nora took us to some amazing places rich in history. We tried some of Hungary's national beverages, Unicum and Palinka, in Grinsingi Borozo, a traditional wine bar in the centre of Pest. And what trip to Hungary would be complete without sampling goulash, which we tasted in the beautiful Central Café, where Budapest's intellectual class used to catch up and share ideas. One of the most interesting spots on the tour was a shop a little off the beaten path, where we tried one of Hungary's favourite treats. So what you have there is called Turo Rudi. Uh, Turo means mm -hmm. this kind of cottage cheese. It's okay. not exactly like your cottage cheese. Yeah. It's somewhere between ricotta and cottage cheese. Okay. It's sweetened. It has a little bit of orange flavour and chocolate outside. Yeah. This is the, the favourite candy bar of the Hungarian children, actually. It looks amazing. It smells it as well. So I guess I'll just dive in and try it. Yeah. Mm. It's something, oh, it delicious. something that mm. I think every Hungarian has in the fridge. Yeah. Just if you want to have a Just sweet, for a quick snack. Quick yeah, snack, exactly. yeah. But I have to say, my favourite part of Nora's food tour was Budapest's Great Market Hall. It's a huge building full of energy. And from the moment you're inside, you're struck by the smells of fresh food and the noise of the lively crowds. It was the brainchild of the first mayor of Budapest, Karoli Kamameya, who had been inspired by similar structures in both Paris and London, and believed that such markets were important in sustaining a rapidly growing population. Construction was completed in 1897, and today the Great Market Hall is a busy hub for both souvenir hunting tourists and locals to buy cooking ingredients such as the ever popular paprika, which is a staple of many of Hungary's national dishes. And let's be clear, Hungarians love paprika. They consume it in vast quantities, using it for flavor and color in almost everything. Uh, we eat around a half kilogram of paprika per person per year in Hungary. Oh. That's much more than the European yeah, average. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Nora was keen for me to try some Hungarian salami before we moved on, and I was only too happy to oblige. Hungarians make salami from a variety of meats, including pork, game, horse and mangalika, which is a type of hairy pig unique to Hungary. I got to try a wide variety of salami and they all tasted fantastic, especially the ones with the paprika. It really added a nice kind of smoky flavour to it. Nora's tour was a fascinating insight into how Budapest's food culture intertwines with its recent history. If you'd like to take a tour with Nora, and I highly recommend that you do, then make sure to visit her website at foodtourbudapest.com. Budapest is known as the City of Spas. There are well over a hundred here, and the Seicini Thermal Baths is the largest, oldest, and most famous of the lot. And I really didn't feel I could say I'd experience the city without a dip in the naturally heated waters myself. The water ranges from 18 to 38 degrees and contains minerals that are said to help in curing ailments such as joint pain, arthritis and post-traumatic injuries. The baths are absolutely beautiful and a true experience unique to Budapest. I'm told they're even more striking in winter when you can sit outside in the heated water as snow falls around you. One thing I would say is the Seicini baths are incredibly popular with tourists and you can see it will get very busy during peak times. I'd say avoid the weekends in particular as you can end up shoulder to shoulder in some of the indoor pools. If I'm honest, it felt a bit more like a tourist attraction than the relaxing thermal bath experience I was expecting. So we've just finished up at the Seicini thermal baths, which was busy. It was 
great, it was really relaxing and lovely and warm, but it was shoulder to shoulder. There were so many people there. But now we're heading over to uh, Hushuk Tere, which is Hero Square, where we'll uh, soak in the sights a bit. Then we're gonna head into town and spend the evening at a lovely bar. Five to ten minutes walk from the bus through the beautiful city park is Hershuk Terra, or Heroes Square. The square serves as a memorial, including the seven Magyar tribe leaders, Saint Stephen, the first king of Hungary, and finally the giant Millennium Monument, built to commemorate the thousand year anniversary of Hungary. These days, the square hosts large public events, serves as a meeting spot for locals, and, of course, yet another item on the tourist trail. As evening drew in, we headed for the final stop of our time in Budapest. In the old Jewish quarter, in the city's 7th district, is Budapest's oldest and most famous ruin bar, Simpla Kurt. In contrast to most of our previous locations, the ruin bars are a relatively recent addition to Budapest. Popping up in the early 2000s, they began life as temporary bars in abandoned spaces. In fact, the current location of Simpler Kurt is not its first. It opened a few blocks away in 2002, before moving to its current address in 2004. As you can see, the bar is decorated in this haphazard, eclectic kind of style that wouldn't look out of place in East London, Brooklyn, or even some of Berlin's trendier neighbourhoods. The building was honestly like nowhere I'd ever drunk a beer before. Everywhere I looked, there was something new and strange to pick apart, something new to see. The nightlife is an unmissable part of the city's experience, proven by its popularity with overseas stag dudes. And whether you're bar hopping or looking for somewhere to spend your night, Budapest ruin bars are a must visit. So our time was coming to an end, but I still had one more place that I wanted to visit. Earlier in the day, I'd mentioned to Nora that we were due to visit Simpler Kurt, and she tipped me off to Street Food Caravan, an open-air food court just next door. It's a small space, but it's filled with all kinds of street food vendors. People sit together and eat all kinds of cuisine from all over the world. There was a great energy here, and the sounds and smells of the food really were an assault on the senses. It was the perfect companion to Simpler Kurt, and a great place to finish our time in Budapest. So I'm just sitting here with my noodles, end of day two, and it's just been such a great trip. I'm so exhausted, but I'd do it all again in a heartbeat. If I had one top tip though, it would be, you should come here for longer than we did. So we had about two days here, and I think that you could easily spend three or four and still not even scratch the surface of everything there is to do here in Budapest. So yeah, I'm gonna get back to my noodles. Have fun on your Budapest trip. Have you visited Budapest before? If you think we missed out something special, then let us know in the comments below. We'd love to hear about your trip. But for now, I hope you enjoyed this guide to Budapest. And if you haven't been yet, you are in for a treat. See you next time.